the power of the Holy Spirit who lives within all disciples of Jesus Christ. Once we have been made unashamed by our understanding of the gospel, we start a new journey with Jesus. On this journey, he gives us a new life, a new family, a new purpose, and a new love. I'm really impressed with that. Ben made that for us. Um, so um, I'm really excited about that because we are, we're starting a new journey today. And we'll be in Romans 8. You can pick it up uh, in your Bible on the YouVersion Bible app. It's in the events. As the <clears throat> also the, you know, the verses will be on the board or the screens. So it's a pretty bold statement though, isn't it? If you really think about it that the book of Romans is the most important book of the Bible, and if that's true, then Romans 8 is the most important chapter of the entire Bible. Um, it's a pretty bold statement. I made it. Uh, I'm going to stand behind it. And, uh, but I also have thousands of uh, years of commentary and very wise men who have said very similar things. And literally by chance, which of course I don't believe in chance, uh, but this morning I was doing my journal and uh, I, uh, I just kind of flipped through it and I flipped to the very front page of this, this journal and I, I started it on 9-11, so it's when uh, I started this journal. And on that day, if you were doing our church reading plan, we read Romans 8. And so I got to looking, and I highlighted, and then when I highlight a, a, a chapter or a verse in my Bible, then I write that verse in my journal. And uh, so as you can imagine, on some mornings, I intentionally try not to highlight many verses because I don't want to write them. But uh, I highlighted 14 verses. I wrote 14 verses out of chapter 8 in my journal and then journaled on them. There's only 39. So basically, I, I wrote down every third verse. There's a lot, and, if, and if, for those of you who take the time to memorize scripture, I, 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 I guarantee you that you have, a, you have a verse from chapter eight of the book of Romans in your, in your memory. So it's a very powerful, powerful um, chapter, and that's why we're going to spend four weeks just going through this one chapter of the Bible. Because like when I was planning out um, this, this sermon series and, and, and for the year, my planning, and you know, I'm reading through the book of Romans, like, okay, we'll spend, a, we'll spend a Sunday on this chapter and we'll spend a Sunday on this chapter and I'll hit this point. And, and then I got into Romans 8 and I'm like, hey, yeah, I gotta hit that. And I gotta hit that. Well, that's a different point, but I gotta hit that. All right, so we just going to make it its own. Romans 8 gets its own sermon series. And so we're coming out of unashamed. We've, we've been talking about accepting the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and kind of making some changes in our life. And now in Paul, in chapter 8, Paul tells us how this new journey is going to look and some things that we can do. And... Uh, so let's just, let's just get into it. Yeah, you want to hear more about the, it than me. So let's pick it up. We're going to read the first four verses. It says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit." And so this morning, I want us to understand that not only are we on a new journey, but we're going to be looking at some of these new things that is, as believers of Jesus Christ, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we have some new things at our fingertips. And the first thing is we have a new power. 
Okay, we no longer live under the power of the flesh. We now have the power of the Holy Spirit. And that very first word says, therefore. And he's not just talking about what he was saying in, in chapter 7. He's talking about the first seven chapters of the book of Romans is all about how you are dead. We are dead in the flesh. And the law, the Old Testament... And, and he means, literally, the Old Testament was powerless to bring about salvation. As Christians, we do not live under the Old Testament. We live under the New Testament, the new laws. Our salvation comes from Jesus Christ that, he, that we learn through the New Testament. And he's saying, therefore, because of all this death, because of what the law couldn't do, now... We have this new power. For those of us, and it's, that's what he says, for those of us who are in Jesus Christ, we now have, we're in Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit is in us. Let me say that again. The Holy Spirit is in us. He is God. I cannot and will not try to explain how God, the Holy Spirit, lives in in us. I think it's outside of our realm of humans really honestly understanding how the God of creation lives in every one of our hearts. But he does. And, and, and scripture tells us that we were given all of him. So we have actually inside of us this power the same power that resurrected Jesus Christ from the grave lives inside of us. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior and are baptized, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we have this entire power of God inside of us. And I know sometimes we pray this prayer. Father, give us more power. Give us more of the Holy Spirit. You got all of him. You, we, just need to learn how to unleash him. We're holding him back. We have all of him. But we're free from the law of the Old Testament. And we are also, though, we are free from sin. Now, he says there is no condemnation. That means there's no punishment there's no wrath of God anymore for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. We have been forgiven. Now, let me make sure that we have this clear, though. We have no eternal punishment for our sins. Jesus has paid that price. But there still may be worldly consequences that we have to pay for our sins. Um, the, the one I wanted to talk about a little bit just briefly this morning was that when, when Kat and I, I've shared, when we were separated early in our marriage, um, didn't know Jesus, he, neither one of us did, and then I, I, uh, I, I found, I, I got desperate, all right? Isn't that how a lot of us come to Jesus Christ? I got desperate, found no other way, found Jesus, and um, I had this new power, I had this new life, and, you know, I, I was fixed. That didn't fix our marriage. See, I still had to pay for the consequences of how I treated my wife in the first 18 months of our marriage. I had to pay the penalty on earth. I'd been forgiven elsewhere. You know, we talked about this this morning, and, and Kat and I are like, you know what? We've been married almost uh, 12, over 24 years now, and um, we're still learning about each other. In the last few weeks, we've been studying the Enneagram and stuff, and this is, you know, a sermon series coming here in 2021. Uh, we've learned a lot more about ourselves and about each other and how we can make our marriage and our relationship better yet. So we have consequences on earth for our sins, but there is no condemnation for us. Um, and so he gives us what he does through the power of the Holy Spirit. The gift that we receive is that now we have the strength to endure and overcome 
the consequences here on earth of our sins. And that's one of the big, ban big advantages of this new power. And the other thing is, and I just want to throw this out there if you're one of those spiritualist type people, um, no other religion says that their God lives inside of us. This is the promise that we have as disciples of Jesus Christ. We have this new power. And he continues, Paul writes with verse five, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Um, that last verse there, those who live in the flesh, they can't even please God. They, you can't please God. And I, that, that really just hits home, doesn't it? But this other power that we have, this other gift that we receive, is that we have a new mind. We have a new power, and now we have a new mind. And I, I, cannot over, I can't overstate this. The battle, and it doesn't matter what the war is, but the battle is won in our minds. The battle is won in our minds. Um, and this is very personal for me. For over 20 years, I've shared and shared how I lost the battle in my mind. I continue to listen to the wrong voice. I continue to listen to the lie of Satan. Um, you know, after I became a Christian, you know, I continue to just listen to this. And then even now, as a pastor, I still have to struggle with this. And then once I finally got to a point where I won the battle in my mind, it took me another seven years to actually get it to actually fully grasp it. In 2014 and 2015, when I really started winning the battle, um, it had been a long journey. And now, um, I, I finally, in March, I, I shared that I had a major breakthrough on another retreat, and, and then COVID hit. And so it's been a struggle for some ways. But um, I will tell you, and uh, on September 4th and 5th, didn't make a big deal out of it, um, some of you know, but at 7 a.m. on Friday, September the 4th, I started walking. And I walked for 24 hours nonstop around this town. I walked 57 miles and never left Kirkland. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Why? Why did I do that? Well, over the last year and a half or so, I've been feel, filling my new mind with new voices inspiring podcast, people who have overcome tremendous obstacles. Um, and there's a gentleman, and his name's Tom Shea, and he wrote a book called Unbreakable. And in the book Unbreakable, he says that, uh, and he's writing it, he's a Navy SEAL. His wife asked him to write it um, because he was going on his last deployment. And I don't know if you know a lot, but there's a lot of history about the last deployments. Um, a lot of service men and women lose their lives or get injured on their last deployment or in the last week of their current deployment. It's just something about those last. And so he wrote this book, and in it he had three challenges that he wanted his kids, if he didn't return, he had three challenges he wanted his kids to, to do in their lifetime. And the last one, the biggest challenge, was I want you to walk for 24 hours. Because the reason is, is because you need to know the lies your body, your mind will tell you. 
You need to be able to understand and hear the excuses that you were telling yourself. And so, in order to, to win the battle of my mind, I, I undertook that challenge. And I will tell you that within two hours, by 9 a.m., this conversation was going on in my head. This is stupid. This is the dumbest thing I've ever done. Why am I doing this? I don't have to do it. I don't have to prove anything to anybody. I have, there, this is actually, this may be, Tom Holton, this may be the dumbest thing you've ever done. And I've done some dumb stuff. This is stupid. Some of you may be thinking, yep, you're right, you're stupid. It's been just over a month. And I can guarantee you two things. My Fight Club squad can, adhere, can, can promise you this, and my family will testify to it. In fact, my son wrote it into a birthday card. I'm a different person. They don't know why, but you are a different person than you have ever been. And it is because I've won the battle in my mind. See, our mind is a muscle, and it gets stronger when we use it. Our faith is a muscle, and it gets stronger when we use it. There are battles that we've all lost in our minds. There are old ways of thinking that drag us back into them, isn't it? They just, we, you know, that's why we've failed so many diets. That's why we've that's why when we have these, we've accepted these sins, well, I'm just never going to change. That's just who I am. I could never do that. Because that's that voice in your head holding you back. Let the Spirit of the Holy, let the power of the Holy Spirit work in you. Get alone with God. Take a long walk if you need to. But you know what? This week, um, as we do our small group stuff, I'm encouraging our small group leaders to tell part of their story about their journey with Jesus. And the reason I am, and I, I want you to understand, and the whole reason I'm bringing this up is I'm not telling you about how Kat and I overcame our marriage. I'm not telling you about um, this long, stupid walk I did because it's about me. I am not the hero in the story. I would have never done it without Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Because, you know, when I, we talk about ordinary people, I am the most ordinary person you will ever meet. And I think that's why listening to these podcasts and, and hearing all of these things that are done by the men and women who serve in the military, people who've transformed their lives, people who've built these big businesses, people who are successful in leadership. You know what? If you actually take the time to listen to their stories, they have failed over and over and over again. They've lost battle after battle. But they get up the next day and they start over. They start again. See, I'm no one, I am absolutely no one special, but God is, has done some really special things in my life. And I, I say this because um, I've seen it in my life and I know how I feel today. And I want that for other people. I want you to experience it. And sometimes it just means you have to get out of your comfort zone. In fact, Every time, it means you have to get out of your comfort zone. Going on with verse 9, it says, You, however, are not in the realm of flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body because of his Spirit 
who lives in you. See, this is, this is, by the way, the hardest part of the whole sermon or this whole chapter that I have to explain. Because I have to get you to understand it without making you freak out. The word if is only two letters. But man, does it have, a, it is such a small word, but it has this tremendous amount of power. It is huge. Look at that section again and just think how many times Paul writes the word if. But it wants you to understand, it wants you to question if Christ is in you. See, you don't get the new, you don't get the new power. You don't get um, this new mind. And unfortunately, you do not get this. You do not get the new life unless you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and have surrendered your old life. We don't get two. You get one. You're either living in your old life, your old ways, or you have a new life with new power and new ways and a new mind. We do not get both. And so the reason this is challenging is because I don't ever want people to people who know and have Jesus in their lives but are still struggling, see, well, do I really have Jesus in my life? I have all these struggles. I don't really always feel the Holy Spirit. I don't know if I'm for sure if I have the Holy Spirit. If you have made a, a sit-down, logical choice, and you have made the decision that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, He is the Messiah, and you have said, I accept Him as my Lord and Savior, your salvation is secure. You've received the gift of the Holy Spirit when you were baptized. You are stamped, you are sealed. If you did it for real. Now see, even the person who, one of the gentlemen who started our movement, the restoration movement, his name's Alexander Campbell, he came from a different background and in that background there was supposed to be this religious experience where you knew that the, you were overcome with the Holy Spirit. And for years growing up, and he was even in seminary, he was studying the Word of God, and he was doing all these things, and the whole time he's questioning, I, 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 I've never had this experience. I don't, I don't know. And he lived for years with this doubt. And then he really started studying and realized that it's not an experience, it's a decision, it's a choice, it's a gift. And I, he's accepted it. But in my own life, again, coming back to me as an example, only because I, I, what good would it do for me to tell somebody else's story? In 1987 is when Jesus introduced himself to me. For those of you who know my testimony, it was during a car accident. He showed himself to me. He protected me. It took me a few months until 1988, the year I graduated from high school, to actually make the decision to believe in Jesus, but I skipped my own baptism. I freaked out, got scared, didn't do it. Boom, exactly. Um, in 1996, Kat and I were married, seven years later. 1998, I finally was baptized. It had been 10 years since I'd known Jesus. It took me 10 years to make that. It took till 2014, 26 years later, for me to surrender to a calling I had in my life in 1988 to enter ministry. But even then, I wanted to do it on my terms. I wanted to do ministry in my hometown so I could do ministry in my own church and I could do what I wanted to do was farm and do ministry, which is what God wanted me to do. I wanted to have my cake and eat it too. It didn't work that way. And now, here it is, 2020, it's taken me six years to get to a point that I can honestly say in front of people 
I have finally won the battle in my mind. I have finally overcome some of the obstacles that have been, I've been battling against since 1988. But see, we, we could have this new life, this gift that he gives, we could have it from the very beginning. I think that's one of the reasons I tell my story is so that you don't stumble and fight for so many years. You know, we've had the Holy Spirit. When you get baptized, you have all the Holy Spirit. So unleash him. You're on a new journey now. It's all new. But in this journey, we need to learn to cut ourselves some slack. And we we need to learn to cut other people some slack too because we're all on a different journey. For me as an individual, I am holding myself to a higher standard. But I also have to remember what we've learned. I also have to increase the bar of grace. For, so I'm going to stumble and I'm going to fall, but I also have to give myself grace. As a church, as a church, we are going to increase the bar. We are going to, we're going to increase the expectations. Connect, growing, serving. We are going to do those things we're also going to increase the bar of grace to one another. So cut yourself some slack, but don't stop walking. Keep going on this new journey with Jesus. We'll finish with these verses. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if we live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. There's that darn word if again. So if, if you do this, you will die. But if you do this, you will live. See, we have all these other things, and the last thing that we get is we have this new obligation. See, because of what Jesus did on the cross, he paid our debt, but we're still in debt. It's just no longer to sin. Now we are in debt to Jesus Christ. We can never pay him back, but that doesn't mean we're not supposed to try. Um, you, know, you know the story of Robin Hood, most of you, I'm assuming. The one version, you know, it's, it's told in so many ways. But in at least one of the versions, you know, he rescues little John, and then little John gives his life in service to Robin Hood. That's the way it works with us in Jesus. He has saved us. Now we turn around and give our service to him. We're under an obligation, a duty, to pay him back. I'm wearing this shirt. Team never quit. Marcus Luttrell. Maybe you don't know who that is, but he's a Navy SEAL. He's the lone survivor. There's a good movie. It's a great book. Um, he's one of the first podcasts that I started listening to that started introducing me to all these amazing men and women in all these different areas of life who have overcome obstacles, who've defeated the battle in their mind. But the, the, the hero in Marcus Luttrell's story was a man by the name of Michael Murphy. He was the leader of, the, of that mission that they were on that went south. And he's the one who went up on a hill and put himself in harm's way to make a phone call to call in the rescue. And he was, he was killed in action. Michael Murphy is the one who received the Medal of Honor. Some of you, if you pay attention to CrossFit at all, there's something called the Murph. And it's the hardest workout they do, and they do it every Memorial Day. And it's named after Michael Murphy because it's the workout he would do as a Navy SEAL. Marcus Luttrell wrote his book and has his, um, has his ministry, is basically, Team Never Quit, to make sure that we never forget who Michael Murphy is. 
because Michael Murphy made the phone call that saved his life. If he can do that for a friend who died in battle, why can't we do that for Jesus? Why can't we make sure that no one ever forgets what Jesus did for us? Why? He wants to make Michael Murphy, he wants to make Murph famous, and that's our call as disciples, that we are to make Jesus Christ famous. It's not our story. It's his story. He's the one who does the work. He's the one who gives us this new life, all these new opportunities, and he's the one who we get to go on this new journey with. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we love you so very much. Thank you. We can never, ever repay you for what you've done. But Lord, I pray that we commit to trying. I pray, Father, that we do the very best that we can, that we do the most that we can to save as many as we can. Father God, help us to make you famous. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.